Don't mind me, I'm just having the time of my life. Hi there, welcome to spooky season. It's only September. It's spooky season, ya yuts, and I'll have no arguments over it. Today, I'm going to be reviewing the first two episodes of Agatha All Along, the spinoff from WandaVision. You know, the series I reacted to but only got to like the first three episodes and just watched the rest on my own time. But this time, let's see if I can actually commit. This should be funny. So, pull up a chair and make yourselves uncomfortable while I take a walk down the witch's road. Have mercy on me, Disney. I need the views. The story opens with, gee, she looks familiar. Apparently, she's just your average Detective Agnes, who gets called to investigate an old hoodie in the woods that also happened to have a dead body in it. Oh look, a random piece of jewelry right out here in the woods. It's literally the only thing out here. She then goes to the library to track down a book that the Jane Doe had, but all the copies were burnt to a crisp. This is every Republican politician's wet dream, despite it being a very dry heat. That was an S-tier joke. I don't care what side of the aisle you're on. The chief of police brings in Aubrey Plaza to take over the investigation because Agnes sucks at her job. Eat my ass, chief. Thinking the jewelry might have clues, Agnes takes it to a pawn jeweler to see what he can dig up on it. Turns out it's a locket that contains a lock of- oi, that's disgusting. Having run out of clues, Agnes finds a clue by decoding the first letter of each word in this extremely long title of a book, which spells out dark- <laughs> Finish it, bitch! Don't leave us in suspense! Aubrey Plaza pops by and brings over some beer and pizza so the two can have a girl-to-girl -girl chat. But before they can start lezzying up, they're interrupted by an interruption. This kid basically broke into Agnes' house looking for something about a road? We'll get to that later. He suddenly starts speaking Simlish, and Agnes' surroundings start changing before her very eyes. Moving along to the mortuary, she goes to investigate the body she and her crew found in the woods, and then Aubrey shows up again in a really creepy way and identifies the body as Wanda Maximoff. And then decades of terrible fashion sense flashes right in front of us. Oh yes, babe, take it off, take it all off. And suddenly we're back in her house and, oh please don't tell me she's, oh yeah, she's out naked because she's going to church. Why are you naked? Because I'm going to church. Come to find out, not only was she living three years of her life inside of that house and deluded into thinking she was traversing Westview, she's also gotten her magic stolen. <gasps> Senior Scratchy! Ladies and gentle ladies, the best character in the show has arrived! Oh yeah, so while she thought she locked that kid up in the slammer, she actually just locked him in a pantry. This isn't funny, Wanda! So that arrest was... maybe more of a kidnapping. But this line delivery was gold, not gonna lie. And then Aubrey Plaza bursts into the house to shank Agatha. Yep, she's Agatha now. And now we get to see two babes fight over a phallic-shaped knife. Y'all knew these jokes were coming, don't act surprised. With a lot of back and forth, Aubrey agrees to leave Agatha alone until she gets her magic back for a fair fight. Weird plot transition, but okay. Oh hey, I forgot you were here. This guy wants Agatha to take him to the Witch's Road, which apparently is this magical yet dangerous journey to obtain your deepest desires. And at first she turns him down until he reveals that he broke the spell that Wanda put her under. I'm sorry, I just can't take him seriously hopping like that. I'm gonna have to keep calling him the kid because he literally can't tell us his name. Is this how she thought she was getting around town? Oh, that's just sad. So the necessary steps to even finding the Witch's Road is to assemble a coven. Yes, we're getting lore dumps two episodes in and it's about freaking time. And our first stop is Patty Lapone. Yes, this bitch voiced this bitch. And she's one hell of a Broadway singer. Funnily enough, she reveals that all the derogatory stereotypes we usually associate with witches came from Agatha. Wow, surprise fucking surprise. Who is this child? I'm my pet. This is my pet. Whoa, whoa, Agatha, he's 16. He's too young for that. Little known fact about my ability. I can't steal your magic unless you blast me with it. 
Yeah, that's not little known. We all knew that from watching WandaVision. And then Patty gets overtaken and starts scribbling down names of other witches to join Agatha's coven. One of them being a candle maker who not only swindled but caused severe injury to over 800 of her clients through her MLM scam. Another one being the troubled daughter of a witch idol who just can't seem to keep herself out of trouble. There was also another name on the list but we'll never know cause Agatha destroyed the list by eating it. Damn, I wish that was my ball. Anyway, the witches all gather in Agatha's house to begin the chant to summon the door to the witch's road. But before they can do that, Agatha absolutely must find a fifth witch for the earth element. Oh, and we find out that the last name scribbled on the list was a picture of a heart, so Agatha goes to pick up Mrs. Hart from next door. Although her actual name is Cher- oh my god, it hardly matters. The kid is asked to stay upstairs and keep a lookout while the four witches and a neighbor sing the chant to summon the door. But since it's already sundown, some ghostly umbrellas spawn and creep their way towards the house. Also, can we get a moment to appreciate Senior Scratchy? He's a very good bun. Now back to these bitches. The Salem Seven, huh? How much do y'all want to bet they're named after the Seven Sisters? If any of y'all practice Wicca, you already know who they are. If this is what the zombie apocalypse looks like, I'm not going to be too disappointed. The witches finish the chant, but no door appears. I don't have time! Yeah, it turns out you don't need to chant for two minutes to summon the door, you just need to be a total bitch about it. If it works for Karens, it works for witches. Hello? Is this the TARDIS? Why does it look like she's traversing the TARDIS? So this is the witch's road. It kinda looks exactly as I pictured it. They all take off their shoes and start down the road. And then, credits roll. The only question I have is, when the fuck are we gonna find out who he is?